Hey, it's Andrew Ams with ACR Commercial Roofing and Verde Landscape Companies. Thank you for being here. If you're seeing this, it's because you're a part of our One Tribe movement. You're either a valuable supplier, subcontractor, a strategic partner that we work with to push our core values out into the world. And today, I'm letting you in on our most important meeting of the week, our One Tribe Weekly. This week, I talked to the team about insects. That's right, I talked to the team about insects, a specific type of insect that I draw parallels to that prove that our state of being is more than just a reflection of our environment and how we can utilize these teachings to live a better and more full life. So let's jump right now into the meeting and I'll see you on the other side. It's 9:30. Um, I want to. I want to jump straight into something that was that was. I don't know where if it was somewhere between um, church service on Facebook to something I heard on YouTube to, to a mix of things last week that I felt is critically important to share with you guys um, as we go into a week um, of, of new uncertainty, certain certainties and certain uncertainties. So. Um, I want to talk to you guys about how, how you can change your life and change the course of, of how your, your being is right now outside of any external circumstance. So I know you guys have heard before kind of the, I don't know if it's cheesy, but the, the conversation that happiness is not, a, is not a destination or place, it's a state of being, or wealth is not a certain materialistic thing it's a state of being and wealth also encompasses a hundred different things. But what I'm going to do today is I'm going to start with a story, but I'm going to prove that to be reality and not just some meme that you see on Instagram. And um, if, if you're listening now and, and you've got your phone set up, I turn it over, turn notifications off. Um, what I'm going to speak to you is not something that's direct for me or something that I just set on a mountain and, and thought of. This is, this is real world um, research and things that, that has changed my life. And I hope that um, it changes yours and in turn makes us stronger as a business unit. So what I, what the, the, I, I guess the base thing that I heard was a story um, about a certain silkworm. And, and you guys may have heard this analogy before, um, but a silkworm that based off of what they eat, so what they consume, the pigmentation of their, their skin, so to speak, I don't know if a silkworm has skin, but the, the pigmentation of that changes based off of what they consume. So I got to thinking about that. I thought, okay, so based off of what we eat or what we bring into our body, um, that could totally change the composition, which it does in the silkworm. And actually, as I looked further, uh, there are tons of insects that actually their pigmentation changes based off of what they eat. Now, we know as humans that our skin doesn't change based off of what we eat. Um, but I think that that is, no, I know that that is more of a reflection of our skin uh, rather than it's not changing things about us based off of what, what we eat. So let's, let, let, let me break this down into two things. Like everybody on this call can agree that if you eat crap, you feel like crap, right? Everybody agree with me on that? Absolutely. If you put yeah. diesel, in, in, diesel in, a, in a gasoline vehicle, uh, that vehicle will not run. Like that may be the most common sense thing that anybody who's ever uh, fueled up a vehicle knows. You put the wrong type of fuel in it, uh, that, that engine, that machine is going to last for maybe a few miles, but then it's going to be on the side of the road um, and you're going to be SOL, so to speak. So I, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to walk through today and prove to you how we have full control of our entire life just based off what we consume. And I'm not just going to talk about food. I'm also going to talk about 
um, energy. I'm going to talk about news. I'm going to talk about all of it. And I think it's really timely as we roll into a week uh, where external circumstances are all going to change. So let me, let me break down two things for you because there's, there's two state of beings um, that are created by consumption for all of us. And, and when I say state of being, I'm, I'm, these two states I'm talking about are the physical state and the spiritual state. And give me a second because I'm, I'm, I'm going really, to make this easy. I'm not going to make it just crazy mystic. But first and foremost is the physical state. That goes to the silkworm I talked about. That goes to if we put diesel in a gasoline engine, it's going to break down. So as I started looking this up and preparing for this week, um, I just looked up basic Webster's Dictionary uh, definitions for physical and spiritual. I think we have to have a baseline for what I'm talking about here um, for the actual message or the topic to make sense. So physical, as I looked it up, um, the definition is related to the body as opposed to the mind. So physical, simply related to the body as opposed to the mind. So, for example, um, when it comes to input, when I consume a diet that my body needs, right, that has fuel that I need, my body performs, right? It performs by me being able to get up on time, by me being having a clear mind, by me being able to speak with you guys today because I fueled my body with what it needs. So physical is pretty simple for everybody to understand. And that state of being um, is, I think we all know it pretty well. Like everybody knows that there's a certain thing that you eat when you, um, after you do that, and if you eat too much of it, well, my physical state of being goes down and I don't feel so good. But I think what we ignore far too often, and this is critical um, right now with what's happening, is our spiritual state of being, okay? And that is not some crazy mystic thing. I know it sounds that way, but the word spiritual is derived simply from the root word spirit, right? Spiritual spirit. Now, what is spirit? When I looked that up, and I'm, I'm reading from my notes here because I don't want to botch it. Y'all have seen me do that before. But spirit is the non-physical part of a person, which is the seat of emotions and character. So spirit is the exact opposite of physical, right? The non-physical part of a person, which is the seat of emotions and character. So when I looked up the definition for spiritual, spiritual, so let me add that on there. It's relating to the human spirit as opposed to physical things. So we look at physical versus spiritual, right? All it is is real world body versus real world mind, okay? So I go back to um, the opposite of physical. It is your mind. Spiritual doesn't have to be religious. Spiritual doesn't have to be, you know, what I've always considered it for a, a big part of my life is I, I envision some like crazy universe driven something, some mystic goofy thing that people talk about, uh, your spirituality is, is simply the seat of the emotions that you feel and the character, right, that you have. So these two states, and this is, this is what's vitally important right now, they are inter inter interdependent and interconnected. So they're, they're interdependent, in other words, they depend on each other. They're not independent of each other, okay? They work together and they're interconnected. And here's how this works. Your physical state creates um, actual feelings that tell your mind what you are, okay? I'll, I'll get done with the, the theory behind this in a second, but your physical state, so in other words, what you eat, if you're tired, if you're bloated, if you're sore, um, whatever it is creates a feeling, right? It creates a physical feeling. Everybody knows when you eat something bad, it hurts, right? Or it makes you bloated. That feeling tells your mind and sends your mind a message about you, about who you are, about how you feel. Everybody can get that. But what you don't get and what people miss so often is that your mental state, so once you've received that, your mental state and in your brain via your pineal gland sends hormones to the rest of your body 
which then dictate more physical feelings. Everybody on here on this call knows what, what hormones do and what they are. Well, this is a cycle. It's called the mind-body cycle. These things work together. And both of those states, your physical and your spiritual, remember your spiritual is only driven by emotions, right? That is all fueled by what you consume. Period. What we eat fuels and creates our physical state. What we consume from a standpoint of whether it be media, education, the people around us, fuels our spiritual state of being. And those two things are interconnected and interdependent. They work together. So the point is that spirituality is not so mystic. It's not some crazy thing. It's simply what are we consuming that is driving right the actions? Because when we feel an emotion or when we feel something, we act in a certain manner. So number one, our spirituality is not that mystic. Number two, our state of being. So overall, again, you can be in a state of, state of happiness. You can be in a state of sadness, depression. You can be in a state of aggression, right? You can be in all different states. Um, but that total state of being is driven from the physical and spiritual. And once you understand that, we know that we construct our state by what we consume. Okay, so this is, this is what's so important for me to talk to you guys about today, is that the outside external circumstance is going to change. And whether it be this situation right now that we're dealing with, with a worldwide pandemic, or it be something else in your future that is an external thing, you have the choice to consume certain parts or certain things, right? They're going to drive the rest of your life or not to. Okay. So it doesn't mean that you bury your head in the sand, but you have the opportunity to consume certain things. And that's going to drive not just how you feel that day. I hope by some of the facts I've given you up here, you realize it's going to drive everything. It's going to drive your, your hour, your day, your week, and then in turn, of course, your life. So the last point of that is our state of being dictates the result of our lives, which I kind of just said there. So if we want to control the outcome of our life, then we have to control the tiny things that we consume, both for our physical state as well as our spiritual and emotional state. And when you break it down to that level, for me, and this is just for me, it makes it really simple. It makes it, it's more encouraging. If all I have to focus on is what am I consuming? How am I consuming it? And how am I letting that, you know, work through my body, whether it be physical, physically or spiritually, then that puts me in, in much more control of my overall state of being. And I think that everybody on this call, everything that you do in a given day, you do in hopes that you create a more positive state of being. Everybody wakes up every single day and goes to work or goes to school, makes the phone calls that they do, make decisions based off a hunt for a state of happiness. We go to try to make money because we think that'll make us happy. We go to find more friends because we think that'll make us happy. We eat certain foods because we think that will make us happy. That state of being, right? So rather than hunting all random different ways and things, I want everybody to think about what you're consuming uh, and realize that you have full control to dictate that state of being, which is what you're actually working for every single day. Okay. So the mission, and now more than ever, what I'm getting to is we have to guard what we're fueling our body and our mind with. Okay. I think you guys are doing a great job. Just to the point of the earlier part of our meeting, the winds that we're pulling out now are more targeted and more focused than ever, which tells me that this group is pretty far ahead in what you're fueling your body and your mind with. So we need to continue to do that. And to my point earlier, we need to continue to fuel our bodies and our minds with education. We need to continue to innovate, right? I said a minute ago, we need to be booking for May. We need to be innovating the way that we're connecting with people, right? 
and we need to continue to fuel our body and mind with individuals. So education, innovation, and individuals, and what I mean by that is relationships, okay? We have the power to construct a whole different outcome, maybe even bigger than our original 2020 goals if we consume the right things now, and maybe even more so if we consume even better fuels than everybody else's. Because at this moment in time and over the next two weeks, there is going to be more opportunity to consume garbage. And I mean this physically and spiritually. Physically, because the grocery stores don't even have toilet paper, right? I've found this in my personal diet the last couple of weeks because I'm more limited. I have more of an opportunity to eat garbage that's going to make me feel worse. You certainly have the opportunity to consume more garbage from a mental state and what's happening uh, than you ever have before. So if we can continue on the momentum that we have to only consume ourselves with the things that are life building, goal grabbing and destiny, let me see if I can find something that rhymes, destiny <laughs> delivering. How about that? <laughs> you didn't think I could do it. But if we continue to fuel ourselves with that, I'm telling you, it is, it is, uh, you, you wouldn't see me speak so passionately about this if I didn't believe it in every single fiber of my body that we're going to come out this year stronger and our goals are going to be, we're going to look back and go, oh my gosh, we were worried about doing this in the normal times, but because we got ultra focused on what we were doing in tougher times, we, we create even more. And I'm, I'm excited about what that means for 2021. Uh, when we realize the power that we as individuals and as a team have this year, uh, because it's going to make that growth curve that we had uh, even steeper than, than we dreamed it, it, it was going to be. So I want you guys to think about that. I want you guys to take it down to the micro level. What are you consuming this week? And I want to be clear, that does not mean bury your head in the sand. Uh, the, the current pandemic that we're facing is real. It's real. It's there. You've heard me say that a million times. Doesn't mean bury your he your head, uh, but it does mean to take in the facts, right, and then consume things that will build uh, rather than break down. Yeah. Hey, it's Andrew Ammons. Thanks for sticking around for the meeting today. I hope that I showed that spirituality and state of being is not such a mystic thing, and I hope you can plug it into play uh, in your life and business now. If you want some more of this, we've got plenty of videos, past and future stuff. Uh, check out the two here. It's a great place to start. We'll see you there.